We have learned a dividend is a distribution of earnings to the owners of a corporation. There are several types of dividends a corporation may declare. There are cash dividends, stock dividends, and property dividends. A cash dividend, the company distributes earnings from it in the form of cash to its actual owners. A stock dividend, the company distributes earnings through the issuance of additional shares of stock. And then a property dividend, the company distributes earnings through giving assets other than cash to owners. Um, this type of dividend will actually not be covered in this in this video. We're looking solely at cash and stock dividends. So let's talk a little bit about dividends. Corporations do not have to pay dividends, but when they do pay dividends, there are three dates of importance. One is the date of declaration. The date of declaration is the date the company announces a stock or cash dividend. The date of record, this is the date that tells us who to distribute the cash or stock dividend to. And then finally, we've got the date of distribution, and this is the actual day we distribute the cash or the stock dividend. Now, from an accounting standpoint, we only have to record entries when it impacts our financial position. So really, if you look at this, what days actually impact your financial uh, position or your accounting equation? Well, one is the date of declaration. Um, why is that? Well, the date of declaration, the day you say, I am going to pay a dividend, you've actually created a liability. Once you declare you're paying it, you owe your stockholders the dividend. Um, so in that case, it does alter our financial position because we owe the money. Now, date of de uh, record, excuse me, does not actually impact our financial position. Once you've declared it, you have the debt. The date of record just tells us who the debt is being paid to. Um, it gives you the, the list of information on who to distribute the, the dividend to. It doesn't alter the amount you owe. It doesn't necessarily um, mean you're paying it on that day. It's just simply the date when this is, as of this day, if you own the stock, you get the dividend. So it gives us who gets the dividend, in essence. And then finally, it's date of distribution. And this is the actual date we, we pay the stock if it's a cash dividend, or we give out stock if it is um, a stock dividend. So date of distribution impacts our financial position because it removes the debt component, um, or the, the component that says we owe something, and then it replaces it with the actual asset or the shares of stock, depending on what type of dividend. So that does impact our financial de, uh, de position. So the two dates really that we have to, to worry about in accounting is declaration and distribution. Date of record is important, but it doesn't create a journal event, or so to speak. It doesn't need to be recorded because it doesn't impact the financial position. So let's look at an example and see what we can do here. So let's assume Parker Company had the following stockholders equity section of their balance sheet as January 1st, 2014. We had common stock, $5 par, $2 million in that account. We had paid in capital in excess of par for $500,000. Then we had retained earnings for $4 million. For total stockholders equity is $6,500,000. On March 1st, 2014, Parker declared a $1.50 per share cash dividend. The dividend is to be distributed on March 31st to shareholders record March 15th. Record the necessary entries for the month of March. So the first thing we have to look at is March 1st. Now March 1st is the date of declaration. This does impact our position, so the first thing we're going to do is actually record the dividend. Now, depending on, on your situation, some companies will record this as a cash dividend or other companies will simply hit it directly against retained earnings. Either account is fine, it really just depends on the setup of the company. Cash dividends would be a temporary account. At the end of the accounting period, it would get closed out to retained earnings. So you can just hit retained earnings when you're dealing with a cash or stock dividend. So either account would be acceptable, either cash dividends or retained earnings, either one. Now, the next thing we need to know is how much. Well, the first thing you need to know is that um, cash dividends or stock dividends are declared on outstanding shares of stock. So the first thing we need to figure out is how many shares have they issued and how many shares are still outstanding. Well, nowhere in the problem did it give us the issued shares, but we can figure that out. We know that a common stock account is always carried at its par value. So whatever shares were put into this account were put in at $5 per share. So the total balance in the account is two million. So if you take the two million share or two million cash balance and you divide it by the five dollar par, you get four hundred thousand shares. So we know this company has four hundred thousand shares that they've issued. Now the next question is how many are still outstanding? Well, really, in in our view of this, the only thing that impacts our outstanding shares is treasury stock. 
When the company buys back shares for Treasury and holds those, it reduces the outstanding shares. Since this company has no Treasury stock, we know that the issued shares and the issued and outstanding shares are exactly the same at 400,000, assuming everything else is constant. So, we know there's 400,000 shares outstanding, and it's $1.50 per share that we're going to give out, so that gives us 600,000. So again, how did we get that? Well, we took the 2 million, that's the number of shares outstanding, we divided that by $5. That gave us 400,000 shares actually outstanding. Then we multiplied that by $1.50 per share, which brings you to the $600,000 dividend. So that's the amount of dividends we're actually giving out in this problem. Okay. Now, like I said before, that creates a payable. So we're actually going to hit a payable account. So cash dividends payable or just dividends payable would be okay as well. All right, so that's our first entry on March 1st, the date we actually declare it. Now the next date of importance is date of record and this one is March 15th. On March 15th you would have absolutely no journal entry because remember date of record gives us who gets the dividend but it does not alter the financial position. So then that leaves us with our March 31st entry, the date of payment. When you pay the dividend you simply remove the dividend off the books. You're getting rid of the payable. So we need to take off the 600000 Well. What's replacing that? Well, how are you going to pay your dividend? Well, you're going to have to pay that in cash. So you need to go in and reduce the amount of cash that you're holding in the company because you're reducing the liability. You've got to reduce the cash because you're paying down the debt. That's really the only entries you have to make for a cash dividend. The date of declaration would always be the same. Date of payment would always be the same. Just make sure that you use the outstanding shares times the dividend amount in order to calculate the dividend. Now, on July 1st, the company issued 10,000 shares of common stock for $20 per share. Record the entry for the issuance of the new shares. So now, in this case, in this case, we're not actually paying out any dividends. We're issuing new shares. Well, when we issue shares of stock, we usually receive something. And in this case, we're receiving $20 per share. So we're going to go in and we're going to hit cash because that's what we're receiving. And we're receiving $20 per share. And we're issuing 10,000 shares. So that's going to give you a total of $200,000 um, in cash. Now, why are we receiving cash? Well, we're receiving cash because we're issuing stock. And again, we call it common stock here. So we're going to hit our common stock account. Now, what do we have to remember about common stock? Well, you have to remember that stock accounts are always carried at the company's par value. So in this case, the company par says that our stock has a $5 par value. So if you take the 10,000 shares times the $5 par value, you end up with $50,000. So keep in mind, you always carry the common stock at its par. And then, um, we've already covered the, the issuance of stock in a previous chapter, but re, or previous um, lecture. So what we've got to remember here is that anytime you pay in excess, you have to hit a capital account. And remember, we, ca we called that paid in capital in excess of par. And this is on common stock. Now, I did say uh, that typically I abbreviate that PICEP, PICEP common, um, just to make it easier. But for this video, I'm going to write it out so that everybody can see what account we hit. You, pay, you basically hit an additional paid in capital account because they're paying in more than the par value. But we must record the stock at its par value. So there you go. You have to have an, a, a separate equity account to sort of catch all of that excess. Okay, so that goes into the paid in capital excess of par. All right, now, August 1st, 2014, Parker declared $1.50 cash, uh, per share cash dividend again. So again, we're declaring another dividend. The dividend is to be distributed on August 31st to shareholders record on August 15th. Record the necessary entries for the month of August. So again, you've got August 1st. That's your date of declaration. Again, you have to record the dividend on date of declaration because it creates a liability for us. So. Um, again, you can either hit the cash dividend or the retained earning account, and then you're definitely going to hit the cash dividend payable account. Now the question becomes how much? Well, again, how many shares are um, outstanding? So pause the video for a minute, see if you can come up with the number of shares outstanding. 
All right, when you did this, you should have came out with 410,000 shares. Well, why is that? Don't forget, you started out with the 400,000 shares, right? That was the original amount. Two million divided by five dollars gave us 400,000 shares. But then you issued an additional 10 shares, 10,000 shares, excuse me. So that brings our total to 410,000 shares that are still outstanding with our company. Then you're going to multiply that 410,000 by the actual dollar fifty per share, okay? And when you do that, you get $615,000. So that's going to be the amount of our dividend. All right. So that's what we would record is 615 there. Now again, August 15th is the date of record. We do nothing with the date of record from an accounting uh, journal standpoint. We simply let that be. Then we get to the date of distribution or issuance here. And on this date, we actually pay the dividend. So we simply remove the payable off of our books. And once we do that, we go in and we pay it in cash. And that's in essence all there is to a cash dividend. Just be sure that you always calculate the outstanding shares properly. Now let's flip gears a little bit and uh, look at stock dividends. So assume Parker Company had the following stockholders equity section on January 1st. So again, we got common stock 500,000, but now we've got a dollar par. We've got paid in capital of 100,000, retained earnings of 400,000. Total stockholders equity is just a million. So we're scaling down in this example a little bit. Oh, March 1st, 2014, Parker Company declared a 10% stock dividend when the market price of the stock was $15 per share. The dividend is to be distributed on March 31st to shareholders of record on March 15th. Record the necessary entries for the month of March. So again, date of issuance, or excuse me, date of declaration, date of issuance, date of distribution is later. Date of dis uh, de declaration, oh, I'm getting tongue-tied, my apologies. So March 1st, the date of declaration, we declare this dividend. Well, just like before, it's a dividend. So instead of hitting cash dividends, we're going to hit stock dividends. Or just like before, you could alt and hit retained earnings. Either account is absolutely fine. Depends on how your company structures the dividends. Now, the question becomes how much? How much are we going to hit this dividend account for? Well, just like the issuance of stock, stock dividends must be carried at market. So step one, we need to figure out how many shares are we going to distribute. Well, first thing we need to know is how many shares are outstanding. So again, 500,000 divided by one. So, oops. So we're gonna take 500,000 and we're going to divide that by $1 par. That equals 500,000 shares. Now I know that was obvious, but I wanted to point out that fact that it's not just 500 because that's the balance of the account, it's 500,000 because it's a dollar par. So you take $500,000 in the account divided by a dollar par it gives you 500,000 shares. Then you times that by the 10%. Why is that? Well you have 500,000 shares outstanding, you're giving each of your um, owners 10% more stock. So that's going to come out to a total of 50,000 shares to be distributed. Okay, so to get your stock dividend, those 50,000 shares then are carried at market price. So you're going to multiply that 50,000 times $15 per share. So 50,000 times $15 per share gives you the 750,000. Now, depending on your book, um, this can be handled slightly different, but the way we're going to learn it here in Principles of Accounting is that this goes into what we call a common stock distributable account. Now the common stock distributable account is an account that just holds the common stock until we actually hand it out. So there again, it's a common stock account, it just hasn't been handed out yet. So when we put it in, we have to put it in at par. So you're actually going to record the common stock, stock distributable at its par value of 50,000. And again, when we have any difference when it comes to the issuance of shares of stock, it goes into our PICEP, our paid in capital, in excess of par account for common. Okay, and that would be 700,000. Again, that is an abbreviation that I use. Um, if you are taking an accounting class, you need to make sure that your instructor allows abbreviations before you use that. All right, 
date of record, or uh, really on this case, March 15th, there would be nothing. Then the last date is March the 31st, and that's when we're distributing the stock. Here we're just giving out stock, so again, we're going to get rid of the common stock distributable account. Again, that's not a liability account that is actually part of stock closure equity. It goes with the common stock account. However, we keep it separate to show that we have not yet handed out those shares. Um, so we need to take that off at the 50,000. Now we physically handed out the common stock, so we're going to go in and hit the common stock account for 50. Again, this is one way that we could handle this. Your book may teach slightly different, especially if you're an intermediate student. But a lot of the principal's accounts will use the common stock distributable account to put that in. Okay, So hopefully this clears up the journal entries for cash dividends and stock dividends.